Just a few weeks ago, I made a video about artificial intelligence and the effect it'll have on filmmaking, something that I'm certainly not the first person or last person to talk about. Yeah, it does feel like at this point, what is there to really add? I even think I said that exact line in the video and here we are adding another thing to the pile. But thankfully, Ashton Kutcher's here to save the day. He provided us with a new take, a new angle. It's so bad you have to laugh about it, you know? I can't be too mad at this, because it's such an idiotic idea. I have seen close to nobody online defending him. I think everyone can kind of see through Ashton Kutcher. No one thinks he's um an intelligent guy. <laughs> but let's unpack it. Um, the video is somehow not available to watch anymore. I don't know why that is. But this Variety article sums it up. The headline is, Ashton Kutcher says soon you'll be able to render a whole movie using AI. The bar is going to have to go way up. Let's start with the headline. Um, the bar going up. I think this whole article, his, his whole thing that he goes on, it, it reeks of uh, that kind of guy that thinks everything in Hollywood is bad right now. Every movie that's come out in Hollywood in the last few years has been trash. The industry is dying. And I don't really know where this attitude has come from. I know there was the pandemic. 2019 was such a booming year and there was so much excitement, at least from my perspective, that we haven't really gotten back there yet. But at the same time, every year I struggle to put together my top 20 list because there's so many goddamn good movies coming out. Just this year, it's been incredible. Dune 2 seemed to be like universally loved. Freaking Furiosa, a little bit of a mixed bag, but most people really like that. It's pretty good for a prequel. Fucking Bad Boys. I haven't even seen that movie yet, but the, the reception has been <laughs> really good. I'm allergic to unexpected praise. I don't know. I'm just a little tired of everybody being like, the movies are back. The movies are back. I said that in my last video. I'm I'm guilty of this. But it's just like the movies have been back. Why are we why are we treating movies like the underdog here? They they've been running this shit for a while. We we all agree that they're great. They've been great. So I don't know. I also don't like this whole mentality of the bar is gonna have to go up. We're gonna have to really start trying now. As if the bar isn't already up there. I mean with streaming services and nobody wanting to go back to the theater, I feel like studios have been trying harder than ever to crank something really special out. But look at last year. Again, Barbie, Oppenheimer, the biggest in theater IMAX spectacle movie this year wasn't a Marvel movie. It was Dune. And that, that was like a good film. I don't think movies are as dead as people make them out to be. I mean, it's a weird period, sure. I, I think Hollywood is struggling to figure out what the safe bet is now because nobody is really banking on superheroes like they used to. Theaters are, are kind of losing money. People don't want to go to the theater. All that aside, I think the actual movies that are coming out are pretty damn good. I think this year has been a pretty successful one so far, quality-wise, I should say. But Ashton Kutcher, wherever he is, does not agree. He goes on about AI and says he has a beta version of Sora and thinks it's pretty amazing, saying you can generate any footage you want, you can create good 10-15 second videos that look very real, it still makes mistakes, it still doesn't quite understand physics, but if you look at the generation of this that existed one year ago as compared to Sora, it's leaps and bounds. In fact, there's footage in it that I would say you could easily use in a major motion picture or a television show. He's not wrong, you could easily use it. But there's two things to that. Uh, one, nobody wants that. <laughs> there's a great Patrick Willems video that I think about pretty often. It's called the most difficult shot in movie history and why it matters. I'm not going to be able to sum it up as great as he does, but he talks about this shot in Brian De Palma's The Bonfire of the Vanities. It's a very simple shot of a plane landing on a runway, something we've seen many times before. But the whole gist is that it, it cost $80,000 to get the shot. It's a very difficult shot logistically to achieve. And I feel like that's a great example to bring up right now because it proves that establishing shots aren't just establishing shots some of the time. Even if it's literally just for establishing, even if it's a pretty straightforward shot that most audiences will just write off immediately after it's over. It's the idea of sitting there and wondering how a filmmaker achieved the shot that makes it special. Establishing shots especially, I feel, are most of the time not traditional perspectives that you often see. Usually really far back, looking down at a house. Yeah, they're really tough to get. He's not wrong. You'll probably have to pay a lot of money to achieve some of those shots. But like I was saying in my AI video, there's just no craft to it. There, there's no appeal to it if, if you know nobody worked to get it. I would also argue, while we're on this topic, it still would be noticeable. 
even if you put it in a movie or show and it looked super realistic, there is the small chance that I've already seen a movie that had an AI shot and I had no idea. So maybe I'm completely wrong here. But at the same time, I feel that movies, even the most generic movies, have some sort of distinct visual language to them. And if you were to throw in an AI generated shot, it would just immediately feel out of place. The same way drone footage sometimes looks ridiculously out of place. Just look at Belfast, even with the black and white filter, it, the drone shots look like they're from a completely different thing. But I'm not really saying anything that hasn't already been said here. And I, to be fair, neither is Ashton Kutcher. These are all pretty basic basic AI points that we've run through many, many, many times. You could also bring up how he quickly dismisses stunt workers and entire CGI departments, just brushes them off his shoulder like it's nothing in this clip. He says, action scenes of me jumping off of this building. You don't have to have a stunt person go do it. You could just go do it. I didn't have to hire a CGI department to do it. I, in five minutes, rendered a video of an ultra marathoner running across the desert being chased by a sandstorm, and it looks exactly like that. I just feel like if you're going to jump into a conversation that has to do with film, this may not be the year to write off stunt workers. I love it too. He's he's saying he you could just completely replace the two departments that are basically running the most popular films these days, CGI and stunts. Obviously there are there's a lot to get excited about when it comes to film, but to the average Joe, the CGI and the stunts are the magic. That's the thing that people go to the theater to see. To just replace that with AI seems completely pointless. That was the one last thing that a lot of people still go to the movies to see. But the main point he makes that, that we still haven't gotten to is that you could generate your own movie with Sora. The quote reads, you'll be able to render a whole movie. You'll just come up with an idea for a movie, then it will write the script, then you'll input the script into the video generator and it will generate the movie. Instead of watching some movie that somebody else came up with, I can just generate and then watch my own movie, which is just, just fucking crazy. It is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. I'll be honest. What enjoyment is there to get out of film if you're just watching your own thing over and over again? Is the thing that's so exciting about film not the fact that you get to see a perspective you never would have seen otherwise? What does Ashton Kutcher think film is? What what enjoyment does he get out of it? Is it just mindless slop to him? I also misheard the first time I watched this clip. I thought he said you would write the script and then put that into the software, but he's not even writing the script. It's just the bare bones idea. It's like, where's the enjoyment out of that? What is, what is the perspective? That just seems like a waste of time to me. Why would you want to watch something that is no different from the bare bones idea that it was in your head? That's basically what you'll get with AI. But his whole thing is that if everyone can make a movie, then there's going to be too many movies and the, the good ones are be the ones that survive. But once again, he acts as if AI will do this for us. Like it, it'll be a good thing, but that's, literally already what's happening. Filmmaking is already, to an extent, pretty accessible. Anyone can make a movie with their phones, yeah, but that there are going to be a lot of bad movies. It's still the case that only the good ones will survive, especially on streaming. Only the good ones will last. It just doesn't make any sense to me. The thing is, I, I don't think this article is really worth getting that upset about. Like I said, I think everyone's on the same page. He's he's does no idea what he's talking about. It's not worth getting scared about because this isn't going to happen. It's really not. You can say I'm wrong and maybe this video will age horribly when all of a sudden everything in theaters pfft, forget theaters. When everything online will be AI generated and there'll be no original content. It's just uh, it's such a grim thing to say. But that's not going to happen. Too many people love watching movies and love watching TV shows made by people. I always like using my Thanksgiving and Christmas trips as feelers to see how the non-film people in my life look at film and TV. And everyone's always talking about the shit that they've been watching that year. They've talking about The Bear, even that fucking Dahmer show. People do really get into shows still. It's still a, a thing. So I don't know. I, I don't really take what he's saying that seriously because I don't see this happening. The more serious stuff is the fact that he talks about it replacing certain jobs like CGI and like stunt work, which that is that could very well happen. It probably will happen. But at the same time, those are good examples of something AI just simply couldn't replace. It's the fact that a human could pull off these things that make them so magical, that makes them so enticing. That's, that's it. I'm just,